Hi everyone. I'm going to show you now uh, most commonly prescribed exercises for treatment of tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis. Uh, I, there are plenty of exercises for, for uh, lateral epicondylitis, but these four I'm going to show you today are the uh, bullseye, would I say, uh, very specific exercises that uh, Every time I'm treating a tennis elbow, I always incorporate these four exercises. And of course, there are plenty of more, but these are my four favorites that I use in, in almost all of my tennis elbow patients. So you know how to test the tennis elbow. What the, the tennis elbow is actually inflammation of the common extensor tendon in the lateral epicondyle of your elbow. So these tendons insert here. This is the lateral epicondylitis, uh, lateral epicondyle. So how do you, how you see these tendons? You can move your fingers and you can see how the tendons wiggle and move under your skin and this is where they originate from. So that's where the problem is uh, starting from. That's a lateral epicondyle and that's where, where the common extensor uh, originates and goes all the way uh, down to the wrist and uh, affect, uh, uh, involves in the movement of the, of the wrist. So. Testing of the tennis elbow, you put your elbow next to your body, 90 degrees, you make it stiff and you push against the patient's uh, fingers which you ask him to keep it in a straight position. Usually the positive test uh, associates with pain on the lateral epicondyle, that's how we diagnose the, the uh, tennis elbow, very simple test. Pa patients usually have a problem with the squeeze, right? So sometimes awkward position like having a glass of water can cause pain or uh, anything similar. So one of the things uh, uh, I learned in Mulligan course is uh, distraction of radial head. So you're going to use these two fingers to uh, anchor on the radial head which is just uh, uh, one finger under the lateral epicondyle, maybe two, again depends anatomically on each person. So two fingers under this uh, origin of the tendons we talked about, two fingers under, you're going to anchor your uh, your fingers in the uh, radial head and you're going to pull, you're going to rotate this way, you're going to try to rotate and distract the radial head. So you're going to instruct your patients to hold the ball, anchor these two, push and rotate and then ask them to squeeze. The pain should be 80% gone, if not 100%. Depends how well you're able to rotate. If you as a therapist are pushing on the other side, you can usually do this with great success. If we ask the patient to do their own, again, it's a little bit more, more difficult for them. But this is the point. These two, anchor on the radial head, turn, and then squeeze. The pain should be 80% gone. Okay, you can use the ball, or you can use something like, like this. So, push on the radial head, distraction, and do the uh, wrist pump. Should be less pain. If it still hurts when they do that, it means it's too early, they're in a, in a very acute stage, so don't do that. Uh, another favorite exercise is eccentric loading. You probably know about this, you've heard about it. So what we're going to do, position the wrist in extension, put the weights, and slowly, 3 to 5 seconds, go into flexion. Then you're going to take the weights, so no resistance while doing the extension, position the weights, and go slowly in controlled flexion. So it's eccentric or elongating muscular contraction. So you're going to take it downward, support, wrist without load and extension, reposition the weights, and slowly down. Three to five seconds. Okay? Uh, here I demonstrated four kilos, but for sure you're going to start with one or even less uh, if you're starting this program. You do 10 reps. You start with 10 and then you're going to progress to plus 1 every day. This is what I usually prescribe to my patients. So if you start today with 10 reps, 10 days from now you're going to do 20. Okay? Uh, eccentric loading can be done with the Flexi Bar from TerraBand. You, you can find on YouTube, you can Google and find an uh, exercise called Tyler Twist. They will explain on that video how it's done. I'll just roughly and quickly show you. So you're going to position your hand in the, in the extension, the one that you need to treat, put this flexi bar in that position, rotate with another hand forwards and then slowly in controlled manner, 3 to 5 seconds, 
cone deflection. So it's the same mechanism like the eccentric uh, loading that I just demonstrated with the, with the dumper. So you have the first one, which is distraction from the mulligan uh, course. So you use these two to distract the radial head, gently rotate and distract. Then you're going to apply the squeeze, hold for a few seconds, do 10 times. So that's for the slow twitch fibers, you're going to do a few seconds, hold. And for the uh, fast twitch fibers, you're just going to do 10 times quickly pump while holding the distraction. Okay? Then you have the eccentric loading or tighter twist, you can check it out on YouTube. Uh, and uh, yes, of course, uh, pronation. So, but concentric loading, which means you load the pronators, then you take the, the weights, supinate, reposition the weights, and again, pronate. Pronation means turning inwards, and supination in this specific position means turning outwards, so that you are found facing the facing the the seam. So reposition the weights, grab it, slowly 3 to 5 seconds, turn it inwards. Then support, take the weights, offload your hand, palm facing the ceiling, reposition, take it, 3 to 5 seconds, rotate inwards or in pronation. Again, if you start the program, you start with 10 reps. Okay? Every day increase by 1. So already you have eccentric loading, reposition, Pronation, that's three, and the fourth one, very, very important. Never, never skip this exercise whenever you're treating the tennis elbow. So, uh, this is neuro gliding or nerve flossing or neuro uh, mobilization exercise for a radial nerve. So, what you're going to do, very important thing, is to position yourself properly. So, your shoulders are doing elevation, dep depression, among other movements. So, you will do opposite of elevation. If this is elevation, you're going to push your shoulders downwards, you're going to abduct uh, the affected arm 45 degrees, trying to sustain this depression, rotate your palm so it faces the ceiling, but inwards, flex it, and you're going to do lateral flexions or side bending with your neck. You're going to do five reps of this one, then you're going to take a small break because it can be stressful for the neck. You, as you perform the exercise, you're going to feel the pull through the shoulders all the way to the elbow. So let me show you again, opposite of elevation. We go down into depression, 45 degrees, rotate your arm, pulse, palm facing the ceiling, flex your fingers and flex your, your wrist, and then you're going to perform the movement of your neck. You're going to do five times, and as you do this, especially on that side, you're going to feel the uh, stretch going down all the way to your arm. You're going to do five times, two sets, or overall, ten repetitions total. So you start the program with ten reps of each, unless your physio instructs you otherwise, and slowly progress, progression is very important, progress one repetition per day on every exercise except the nerve flossing. Nerve flossing, ten reps, uh, uh, two times a day, ten reps, uh, I mean, five uh, reps, two sets, two times a day is enough. You don't progress that one because it's going to be too strenuous for your neck. You may end up with some neck pain. But uh, uh, doing 10 repetitions twice a day can be stimulating for the nerve itself. It can improve the, the lateral epicondylitis itself. Thank you for watching again.